Welcome to In Light Connections. And uh, to my left is Ernie Dorsey, and to my right is Merlin McGarry. And uh, we are here with you once again to share with you what we believe that God has put on our hearts to share with you. And the last session, we talked about uh, the prophet and the apostle. And so today we, we have um, gave the uh, title or the theme uh, Fivefold Ministry, because those two are two of the five ministry gifts. And uh, Jesus gave those just before he ascended into, into heaven. And I, I wanted to um, ask uh, Prophet McGarry to read that scripture for us. Okay. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, I believe. Yep. New King James Version uh, reads, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head. You want me to do 16? Oh, uh, you can, yes. Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective work by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Okay, now, I want to share with you, and we'll get back to what the verse, what the passage is talking about, but I want to say to you that Jesus did three things in his ascension. He liberated the righteous, immortal souls from captivity in the lower part of the earth. Secondly, he took these captives captive to heaven. Thirdly, he gave gifts to mankind and ascended into heaven. And that's what we'll be talking about is those gifts, those five, the fivefold ministry gifts that uh, he gave just before he ascended into heaven. Um, they, and, and here's how they were listed, just as she read them. He gave some apostle and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. And uh, that tells us that everyone does not have the same uh, gifts. Uh, sometimes you may get upgraded. And uh, uh, like I started out, uh, God called me to be an evangelist first, and then uh, he upgraded me to the apostle and then the pastor. pastor. Uh, I want to say this from the, from the 11th verse, no, from, um, from what I read, that the purpose of the gifts, that's what I want to share, verse, start at verse 12 where she read mm -hmm. through there, for the perfecting of the saints, mm -hmm. for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And the first one that's, that's in line, uh, and I'm going to read the, what I, uh, how I uh, looked it up, and I am an apostle, but I can only tell you how I operate. So I want to uh, share with you how uh, Dex describes the apostle. Uh, and so in the, the Greek word is apostolos, uh, and that a delegate one sent with full power of attorney to act in the place of another, the sender remaining behind to back up the one sent. And so in, in the case of Christians, it means God sends them to do what he himself would do if he went, if he was, if he was here. So like Jesus left 
us all uh, uh, Christians uh, in the power with the power of attorney, as a power of attorney. So now I want to turn it over for discussion with uh, you ladies. What would you like to add to what I have shared? Um, when we talk about the fivefold ministry gifts, what I have been uh, taught was that the individuals, those that God has given that gift, is actually the gift. So the gift of the fivefold minister, the minister is the gift to the body of Christ. And as you mentioned, the, the main purpose is to train and equip the saints or the body to do the work of the ministry, mm -hmm. that the fivefold are not the ones to do all of the work of the ministry, mm -hmm. but they're the ones to help lay that foundation to build and to train. And then I had just a real specific focus for each of the offices. Okay. Teachers train and equip, or they ground you, root and ground you in the word. Mm -hmm. The evangelists, they reach and save. So they gather in mm -hmm. um, the saints or the body of Christ or the sheep. Mm -hmm. Apostles, they expand the kingdom by their governing and the vision that God would give them. Mm -hmm. So they're mainly a, a headship uh, position. Pastors shepherd mm -hmm. the sheep That's or good. feed the sheep. That's good. You can't look at a pastor and think a pastor is going to lead a large um, group. They're, they're gifting, and, and you know a pastor when you know a pastor's heart. Mm -hmm. They love the sheep no matter mm -hmm. what. Mm -hmm. they, they have such patience for the sheep. So the other role for a pastor is to guard the sheep. And then the fifth uh, office, the prophet. People, prophets reconcile people back to God. They say sometimes things that people don't want to hear, but they need to hear. They help people hear the voice of God for themselves. So they help guide the sheep or the body. Mm -hmm. That's kind of their main role. Mm -hmm. But all fivefold ministers can, can, should be able to teach and preach, lay foundation, support, and, and be a part of, of leadership. Mm -hmm. That's good, I agree, I agree. My, my gifts uh, are dominant in the prophetic and then the teacher. And so there's teaching that goes forth and then there's also the prophetic voice. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are my strengths is in those two. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the gifts can uh, be connected. Oh, yeah. And yes. people, one person can operate in more than just one mm -hmm. gift. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think what I agree with you because I'm thinking um, with an office, some, some camps teach, uh, you know, the apostle and the prophet office don't even exist anymore. That was for mm -hmm. back when. <laughs> but we know that's different because right. we just read it in uh, Ephesians, which is New Testament, which is the current church age, mm -hmm. uh, that they do exist. But what I, my, my, my teaching and upbringing and understanding is that you function in one office. Mm -hmm. And as uh, Apostle Loretha just shared, she, she began in the evangelistic mm -hmm. flow and thrust but promoted up mm -hmm. to an apostle. Mm -hmm. So it does take a lot of training to become um, or um, fill the shoes or feel that you're ready to be released, licensed and ordained mm -hmm. as a, a minister or an office calling, especially for that of a prophet and an apostle. There's a lot of foundation that has, has to be laid. Mm -hmm. And then I was just gonna add what um, Prophet Ernestine shared about her, her she knows her giftings. Mm -hmm. um, her office is one, but her giftings, which could be the anointing, mm -hmm. which is different than the office, yes. can be real strong in certain areas. Because yeah. I know you also, you're, you're a psalmist, worship right. leader. Yeah, right. So that's another area or vein that God will have you in. And then you've got people who are intercessors. Mm -hmm. um, that's right. But not all intercessors mm -hmm. are, are uh, prophets. Mm -hmm. or, or in a stand. And you don't have to be in an office to be an intercessor is what I wanted to, right. wanted to say. That's, that's uh, so true. At mm -hmm. one point, man, I tell you, I was a strong, I mean, I, I still, mm -hmm. you know, get in and pray and, and labor and like that, but mm -hmm. 
God would have me praying for uh, uh, Africa. Guana was one, I think it's Ghana. Mm -hmm. Ghana. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and then I would hear on the radio some things that were going on there. So, right. mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, an intercessor is one that's very sensitive to the mm -hmm. Lord mm -hmm. and has a very strong relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. uh, and He can depend on them to pray through mm -hmm. a matter or an issue. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, he, he, he has them. He, as they say, they're on the wall. Mm -hmm. They're there when he needs them yes. to help the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, um, I had uh, went back to Bill Hammond's book, which is, um, well, I don't want to spend a lot of time. Look, oh, here it is. His book, Apostles, prophets in the coming moves of God. Mm -hmm. And on the fifth page, he shows the only female apostle is mentioned, Julius. Mm -hmm. And he said by the interpretation of the name is what caused him to decide that it, it was a, a female. Mm -hmm. But the prophets, there's uh, lots in the New Testament and I find that pretty in interesting, too, because I didn't see or think that there were apostles in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. I think we kind of talked about that before. Uh -huh. But Old, Te New Old Testament and New Testament. And, and, and the thought came, because I, I meant to get the scripture so I could share it, but somewhere in the Word it says that God doesn't do anything mm -hmm. unless he tell his prophets first. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. To right. the Old Testament. Right. So I can see why they would be Old Testament and New mm -hmm. Testament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that exactly. awesome? Mm -hmm. Amen. A little revelation mm -hmm. for me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> yep. Yep. There, there are uh, apostles that may not necessarily be apostolic. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's the gifting, but mm -hmm. not the office. They ruled in the office, but they don't mm -hmm. practice out of it, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Could you explain that a little deeper? You can be, you can. you can have an apostolic voice. I think that a person who is true apostolic, it walks in the office and is apostolic in nature, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Their nature tends to be more like a builder. Right, mm -hmm. right. They build right. people, yeah. Right, because I mean, it's mm -hmm. like all true prophets aren't really prophetic in nature. They are, they, they're seers, they are um, prophetic in some instances, but not necessarily true all the way, if yeah. that makes any sense. I was gonna say, like with prophets, people, first thing they think about, main thing you do is prophesy. Right, There's right. so much more to be right. a prophet than prophesying. Yes. Come on, thank so, you for yeah. explaining that. <laughs> <laughs> Although Dex says, mm -hmm that that's one of the main features, mm -hmm. uh, now I won't say feature, is it mm -hmm. um, uh, gifting about, get, get, the, about the prophet. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's, because it's the revelation. Prophecy. When you, when you right. tie in, which we're gonna talk about that next, is mm -hmm. the revelatory gifts, right. they are prophetic, because it, it's speaking right. forth right. and revealing what God is saying or doing or going to do. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But I guess I'm thinking prophecy as it pertains to a lot of people, lay people who think, mm -hmm. you know, the, the simple gift. Oh, which yeah, is to edify yeah. and build up, and they always want a word, build me up, build yeah. me up. Yeah. Well, well prophecy, word... you should be going to God yourself to hear God yes. yes. to be built up. You need that relationship with the Absolutely. Lord so you know his voice. Mm -hmm. And once you know his voice mm -hmm. and you tap into the spirit realm, there's nothing else like it. You don't want someone to come up to you giving you a word because you don't, they're just pulling that out of the air maybe, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not really God. <laughs> and, you know, the Bible says, you know, well, God said, you know, mm -hmm. I, I would that you would all prophesy. Exactly. Yeah. He didn't yeah. say, yeah. I, wish, yeah. I would that you would all be prophets. Mm -hmm. no. You know, he no. just wants, yeah. that's the gift yeah. that's good. in it. That's good, Ernie. Yes. So uh, mm -hmm. we can be prophetic without being a prophet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly, so mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Amen. And as you guys were discussing that, I thought back on the uh, evangelists. Now, we know that, well, that um, only in one place that I've seen it mm -hmm. that talks about the evangelists. And uh, Philip was mm -hmm. the evangelist. Remember, mm -hmm. he, he was, 
I forget the place he wound up in. Mm -hmm. But uh, this um, Ethiopian, I think mm. he was, mm -hmm. came along. Mm. And, Philippi. Uh, yes, and mm -hmm. he gave him the word and, and then baptized him. And so the, the, the evangelist, I can, really, I can really speak on that and the, and the apostle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The evangelist, I mean, my heart burned for souls. Mm -hmm. And I still, I mean, God didn't take it mm -hmm. away from me. Right. I, I think it's Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. Mm -hmm. He said he does not repent of the gifts and the right. calling exactly. that he placed on our lives. So mm -hmm. it, it was just an upgrade from there. It wasn't like he said, well, now I'm going to have you to be a mm -hmm. pastor and apostle and I'm going to mm -hmm. snatch no, mm -hmm. I, I still have a, a, a thirst, a hunger for souls, for exactly. people to get exactly. saved. And, and, and uh, he made me such a strong evangelist, I, I would be like a magnet. Yeah, I could be sitting at the mall and people would come mm -hmm. over and sit down and talk and, mm -hmm. and begin to tell me stuff about themselves. And, then I could uh, pray with them right there mm -hmm. and uh, 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 invite them to church. Of course, I never saw them, but. <laughs> right, but it was there. <laughs> but, but, but God mm -hmm. did what he mm -hmm. wanted to do. Mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he touched the heart. Well, they, he says, how can they be saved if they're not drawn? Right. Yes. He right. has to draw them. He has to have that heart prepared. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he has to have the right person that's gonna minister the word of God to yes. them. Exactly. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Now in Matthew 28, Verse 19 through 20, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the mm -hmm. nations. Mm -hmm. Help yes. the people to learn of me, believe in me, and mm -hmm. obey my words, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father and of yes. the Son yes. mm -hmm. and of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. teaching them to follow all that I commanded you. Mm -hmm. And behold, I am with you always mm -hmm. to the end of the age. Yes. That was the last command yes. that Jesus gave the disciples. Yes. And he wasn't just giving it to mm -hmm. the fivefold ministry. That's right. right, exactly. Hello. <laughs> exactly, that was to the body. Yes. Mm -hmm. The body yes. of Christ. That's why mm -hmm. the, the Bible say that the, I say about mm -hmm. the labors are few, the, 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 harvest, the harvest is plenty, is plenty. but the laborers the are few. Are few. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, that, that is great. Thanks for, for reading that for us. Mm -hmm. Because God wants us all to Yes. Uh, occupy until he comes right. back. And that right. does not mean to just uh, eat ice cream and watch <laughs> movies and popcorn. <laughs> exactly. And, and um, I'm being silly, but no, that's he, true, he want though. us working. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the point I'm trying to make. He want us working. He want us mm -hmm. bringing people to, to, to Christ. Mm -hmm. And so. Or being uh, a Christian in name only. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. Instead Find of out what your function proof. is. He yes. created you for a purpose. That's right. Find out what that purpose is. That's right. And and you it. would be surprised. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure I walked there one day, I, I mm -hmm. know I did, where I didn't know what my purpose was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but you can find many different Christians even today and say, well, what is your purpose? Mm -hmm. And they have not know. a clue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have not a clue. But I mean, you know, and it's not too late. Mm -hmm. to know, and God wants you to know who you are more than you want to know mm -hmm. yeah, who you are and your purpose here in the earth. Mm -hmm. Believe me, it's not just to be mm -hmm. here on earth. Mm -hmm. Right. That's true. Right. Amen. So, the pastor, I'm telling you, that, that, that is a place to be and I, I really, I never want to do none of it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. uh, but that the pastoral position is, is quite, a, quite a deal, quite a place to be because mm -hmm. you, like you read, we, we, we are, they are supposed to be there to shepherd the people and mm -hmm. to protect the people. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, but sometimes they, they, they can get, um, sidestepped be, because of how people look at things and how people think. Mm -hmm. um, they're oh, supposed to feed them and they're supposed to grow them up. Mm -hmm. They Absolutely. have to do a lot, you know, with, mm -hmm. with Absolutely. the sheep. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but hey, what do you do with some sheep that don't want to? Exactly. <laughs> That's why they have to be patient. Mm -hmm. And they have to know what their calling is. I know I've seen many a pastor that I don't think they were supposed to be pastors. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to hurt them. <laughs> 
God's anointed. <laughs> Touch him and do him and, any harm. And, 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 and <laughs> you, you, you are absolutely right. I, I, I have uh, gone through some things, but it was good for me. What it did was taught me uh, mm -hmm. how to do and what to do in the position that I'm, that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, I thank God that he showed me that it was for my good. Mm -hmm. even though it didn't feel good. Right, right. I think everything we go through is in preparation mm -hmm. for what mm -hmm. God has for mm -hmm. us to do. Right. And he's not trying mm -hmm. to destroy us. No. Right. But he's trying to bring us to a place mm -hmm. of maturity. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I think. Right. Exactly. Amen. For me, it teaches, it teaches on the first level that um, the place that God really wants us to get to mm -hmm. as far as his, his sheep go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why he says, my sheep know my voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a stranger they will not follow. Yeah. Because there's a way that God treats us. And we always go to people who treat us with respect, mm -hmm. who treat us with love. Uh, because we're not that lovable sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But he loved us no matter what. Mm -hmm. You know, he just, you know, sometimes we're stubborn to repent. But God... He will, re he will, whether we repent or not, he will still forgive us. Mm -hmm. He would forgive us of our sins. That's right. And so, you know, he, that's how he wants us to treat one another. Mm -hmm. He wants us to, 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 uh, to nourish the, the sheep, mm -hmm. you know, and not destroy them. Mm -hmm. And so that's my goal is to be at that point, you know, to, mm -hmm. sh to show them, to love on them, you know, yeah. because I know I'm not always lovable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have to learn to love. And that's the first thing mm -hmm. that God showed us was love. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord. It, you know, real quick, because I want you to give that prophetic word. Um, when I gave, well, I got saved at 89 years old. But when I came back to the Lord, truly came back to, to serve him, uh, I'm telling you, I wanted to see everybody be saved. And, and, and I brought that up because the first thing in the, in the nine gifts of the, the nine uh, fruit of the spirit is love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, some, I think that some people, when, when they get saved, they don't get, I know they don't. We don't mm -hmm. all get the same dose of everything, you know. No, we know. And so sometimes you, you, the love is powerful with some of us when we mm -hmm. come in because we want to see other people saved. Right. And others maybe uh, self-control mm -hmm. pops up bigger than anything else. Mm -hmm. But my point is, is that just like you said, we have, we must love people, and 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 it, as a pastor. You can't uh, call yourself having favorites. Yes. Uh, uh, some you do this for, and some you don't do do mm -hmm. for. And uh, I, I've learned a lot along the way. Am I perfect still yet? No, God. Mm -hmm. I, and, and I hate to even use this because the the young minister that I know, he he preached about that where people say God is not done with me yet, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's because they're doing their stuff. And they want to keep doing it and put it on God that right, that, that right. He haven't cleaned That's them why up I'm yet. Not perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Prophet Merlo, would you go ahead? <laughs> well, this was um, a word of knowledge I received. I know we're going to be talking about that in the next session. Uh, repertory gifts. Uh -huh. And. Um, and I'm actually picking up on it again already. Like I said, when you start talking about the gifts and the anointings, mm -hmm. uh, they start to manifest themselves. You start to really to sense them. And um, the Lord has been showing me there's someone that has been ha dealing with a breast cancer, a breast issue, especially the right breast. Mm. But then, you know, I prayed and I said, okay, Lord, and because when you're an intercessor, you'll get prayer assignments and not know who they are. Right. I've got names, first names, last names, um, and then names of people that I know. Mm -hmm. and, and God has put me in place, a position where anointing came to pray for them. This person, name he gave me was Janice, with no last name. And um, he says, Janice, he, does, he is the healer. 
He says that to believe in him, that the word is in you strong and mightily, stand in faith and firm and receive your healing, a miracle from, from God. And so if, we, if you would just lay your hand, Janice, in that area, or anybody else is having issues with your breast, mm -hmm. breast cancer, any type of healing, actually. The healing, the healer is here to heal. Yes. Yes. Father, we just thank you for your presence. You, we we'll release yes. your healing thank anointing you, Lord. Yes, Lord. on the, on the uh, audience, anyone here in our presence, mm -hmm. in the building, in yes, the studio, Lord. Lord. Just release your presence and anointing on them mightily. Yes. Father, just release them. Increase their faith. Yes, Lord. Connect them where they are, where Amen. their faith is, what Amen. their level of faith, Lord. Draw upon the anointing. Yes, the Lord says, draw you. upon the anointing. Know that I am the healer. Receive, yes, receive, you. receive. Yes, Lord. Receive your healing. Yes. Receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ, we yes. pray. Yes. Amen. 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 And, and I, I want to hook on to that. I'm sorry. It, 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 <laughs> it, it's hit. But for Janice, God mm -hmm. said, trust. Mm -hmm. I hear the word trust. Good. Trust him and obey. Because once you release that distrust, people have hurt you in your life and mm -hmm. they have done things to you that you could not mm -hmm. trust them. But God yes. says, this day you will Amen. trust me Amen. because I want to heal yes. you. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And I want to quickly send a shout out to everyone that's listening to pray for the Henderson family. Mm -hmm. For uh, Pearl Henderson transition yes. last night about nine o'clock, I understand. She mm -hmm. has a son and two daughters, and she was my friend. Mm -hmm. So if you would please pray for the family and lift me up also. Amen. Thank you for Jesus joining us, name. and we will see you the next session. Bye.